know Pim Pimai. Do I pronounce that right? Yes. Let's just, let's just call him Kim for today and for always. Um, we're going to talk about competitive freediving, what it means to him. He's a national record holder to 94 with the monofin. Um, how he leads up to uh, competitions, um, the mental aspects. Is it any different than training? Coming up. What's up, Gerd from GerdLeroy.com, peace in every breath. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm a freedive instructor, I dive on breath holds, and this channel is all about helping you find peace through freediving. And today, I'm here with Kim Kontanu Pimpimai, national record holder for Thailand. And we're gonna talk about competitive freediving. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Hello, Kim. So tell me, when did you do this um, national record? Uh, I started in 2005 free diving and then 2006 I did a free immersion to mm -hmm. maybe uh, 65, 75 and uh, after that I I try maybe another six competition and eventually I got like to 94. Okay, so this is over the course of like uh, three years. Let's uh, say somewhere you progressed from 70 plus to this record 94. Mm -hmm. Right. What did you do in those three years? How did you prepare for this? Is there any specific training? Uh, normally, I, I would plan my vacation. I would stay in go diving, maybe in Bali or Philippines for one or two months. So why not in Thailand? Uh, in Thailand, I didn't come diving too much because the tip is... Uh, actually, I think right now, uh, if I have nothing to do, I could dive in Thailand. It's, it's benefit. Yeah. But at that moment, I I had something else to do in Bangkok. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I only dive on vacation. I could uh, teach two two months, and if there's uh, like competition yeah. between it, I, I sign up for it and okay. participate. Yeah. So Thailand um, has great waters, great beaches, but not so much depth. So for deep diving, you need depths. Um, how, how deep could you go in Thailand? Uh, 45 for sure in the ocean, and then there are some lakes like deep for maybe 96 meters. Yeah, but those are exceptions. Am I getting that right? You really have to know where they are. Yeah, and there are some dam. It could be more dangerous. It could be trees under there. Yeah. But it could be good training though, like mental training. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. it is possible to train deep in Thailand? It possible, but since we're close to Philippines and Bali, yeah. why not just buy an Asia ticket? Of course, <laughs> of course, yeah. So um, when you go train in uh, Bali, um, where exactly do you go? Uh, I go to Tulamben because the condition is better than Ahmed. Okay, and in Philippines? And in Philippines, the first time I've been to Mactan, ah, good school. That's close to Cebu. Okay. And then I try Pang Cloud, which is better. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, yeah, I've met you personally in um, Tulang Ben in Bali. I've seen you in uh, Pang Lao in the Philippines. So let's say in Southeast Asia, those two spots are like the best for deep diving, right? Uh, yes, but yeah, yeah. There, there could be somewhere else in like in the Indonesia. Indonesia is big. Yes, yes, of course. But then we need like uh, community support of free diving. Exactly. Which yeah. now only exists in a couple places. Yes, okay. So tell me something about um, the way you prepare or, or lead up to this um, uh, 94 uh, national records. Um, the months before or maybe years before, um, what is it exactly that you do? Uh, I started free immersion because it's easier and free, free immersion because the dive is longer it, it helps you for the hypox, hypoxia tolerance yeah so hypoxia for the people who are just starting to free dive or um, haven't free dived yet hypoxia means extreme low levels of uh, oxygen yeah. which is something that can happen not necessarily but it can happen on your last part of the dive so when you go down on the deep dive you come back up on the last part, it could be that you're getting out of breath and then that's what we call hypoxia. 
yeah, in, in free motion, it's more like static, you know, you go down slowly and the contraction comes late mm -hmm. and it comes very soft at the end. Yes. So contractions is when your levels of CO2, uh, carbon dioxide are getting higher and uh, your body reacts to this. Mm -hmm. It's actually a signal your, your body gives you by contracting the diaphragm and we call this contractions. It's mm -hmm. actually just a, a sign that our body gives us saying it's about time to breathe again. Yeah, and, uh, as they say, the contraction is actually help us to, uh, to stay longer, to, to not die. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> like uh, alarm bells, okay. It's, it's also like uh, mixing the air, you know, it's, it's maybe it's contract the speed a little bit, it gets some more like bread but sale, whatever, who knows. But many people say contraction is a good thing. Yes, because um, it, what did you say, it mixes, it, it distributes better the oxygen in your ah, system? It's like you have the lung, right, and, and your stomach, is like this, this, so the air could go to the alveoli. Mm -hmm. Some air that is like in the middle, it could like go to alveoli. That's just one theory some people say, and it could make it could be true. Yes, yes. So freediving is a relatively new sport. There is still a lot of theories. We haven't um, yeah. really established. Um, there is different opinions, um, but yes, uh, that is one of them. What, what we are talking now might not even be true. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And that is so wonderful about freediving, actually that we still have to discover a lot of stuff. We're in a coffee shop, uh, by the way, so people are uh, preparing coffee here. Uh, yeah. So, um, is there any specific way you um, lead up to a competition? Let's say like the, the last two, three months before um, a competition. How do you prepare mentally for this? Uh, by, by just diving a lot. You, you know, like if you, if you want to dive deep, you have to have depth and you have to mm -hmm. dive. And once your body is ready, you will not have equalization problem anymore. Like the first the first few days, the first maybe first week or two weeks that I go free diving, like everybody, I swallow my mouth field because I haven't been diving for five months. I come back to it. Of course, my equalization, I would struggle. Yes, so just give me a second. So for people who are not um, on an advanced level of freediving yet, so a common thing for deep divers is to swallow the mouth fill. Um, mouth fill is an equalization technique, so we fill our mouth with air. And as we go deeper, it can happen that we swallow this air and then we actually lose the ability to uh, equalize again. But there is ways to train for this, there is ways to fix uh, this problem, of course. I have. I actually, this is, this is my new way. So now, I used to dive with, like, uh, I ate before and then I go, I go diving and I do two warms up and before I dive. Now, I stop eating before diving and I... I dive in no warm up. Mm -hmm. No warm up, you said, or, or what? No, no, no warm up. No warm up. And the thing is, in the first 15 days, I'm not ready. And when I'm not ready, with no warm up, I will swallow. I will lose my equalization, maybe around 60, 70. Mm -hmm. But once, once I'm once 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 I'm ready, I I won't do that anymore. And it means that my body is really, really up for the depth. Okay, so you need like a couple of weeks, let's call it adaptation, your body has to get used to uh, deep diving again. Yeah, but the thing, the thing, the thing is, if, if you are like people who do, who do warm up for free diving, you, you might not notice like this, this signal, like your body is not ready. You, because you warm up enough and you were like, ah, and then come up, you could black out. But here, I'm doing like no warm up, I listen to my body, oh, so, so I think it's it's better in long terms. It's better. So you switch to a no breakfast. Yes. And no warm up. Yes. So basically, uh, the less you do, the better. Yeah, and uh, tight up breathing. Yes. That's what I always use since the first day. Okay. So um, tidal breathing. Can you explain a little bit of um, that? Uh, it's like tight tidal breath up. Is like when I breathe with FRC. Like my my lung is not fully. It's not completely empty when I inhale, you know, so I, I breathe like normal, like, yes. But then there are people who do like, uh, okay, you do belly, belly breathing 
and then before before diving, you do like three b r e a t h b e t h before. I, I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm very sensitive to hyperventilation. I know right away. After I do two b r e a t h b e t h I know that ha, huh, something is is mixing with my is messing with my metabolism. Yes. So uh, I go with just tidal. Yes. Okay. So um, this comes down to what I just said. The less you do, the better. So the less you breathe before your dive, uh, the better. So basically, you're um, wasting the least amount of energy possible before you do. But this your this thing dive. this thing I just like uh, varies from one person to person. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Apart from deep diving, so during these uh, two three months leading up to your competition, do you always do you also do uh, pool training? Be before this, I didn't do anything and no pool training at all. Not at all, and I, I I could feel that. Yeah. But now I I start to do pool t- training a little bit with myself, nobody, and with some uh, yeah. not professional pool training I do with my my students. But I only do this, and I feel like holy shit. I'm missing out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, what what got better the moment you started doing pool training? Uh, the, the the technique, you know, the technique. Yeah. Like the, the technique is like how how do I swim without using energy and it get far? Yeah, yeah. So the way I do this, for example, one one way to do this is I okay I have my monofin on, I swim as far as possible until my first contraction comes. And if I use different technique, the contraction come at different pace. So you make your technique better by, in the pool. Right, right. By bet, bet, better means like use less energy, more streamlined, more efficient. Right. Yeah. Is there some ratio you could give us, like, uh, like uh, how many pool sessions, how many deep sessions? Is it fifty uh, fifty? I I haven't got to that part yet, mate. mate. But I know that you're still that, figuring that out. That that would be a good thing, but I I never got into it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you only train for monofin, or is there any other uh, disciplines you train uh, for? I used to be a free motion guy, but I switched to monofin. I haven't got back to it. Yeah. And actually, I think when I dive with the uh, free motion, my my uh, apnea capacity was better. Because I, I would dive like there's there's some dive that I go to like three thirty four minute dive I survive four minute eighty meter dive sometimes like I got bad technique bad free fall, but now I only do monofin, so the dive ends quicker so I don't have that capacity anymore. So because you're using a monofin, your dive time is uh, shorter, of course. Yes. And you feel like even I go to ninety, it's less than three minutes. Yes. Yes. So uh, it could be a nice thing to incorporate some free immersion dives in your training. Right, but I try. I already tried like one day free immersion, one day uh, constant w a y it, it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work. But may, maybe, maybe with uh, some combination, it might work. Yes. So we have uh, four disciplines now: uh, free immersion, uh, monofin, bifins, which is a new discipline starting from 2019, and uh, no fins. Now it's it's basically impossible to train for all four disciplines. Um, well, first of all, there are no uh, competitions, two or three day competitions, in which you can do all four disciplines. And another thing, you simply cannot train for all of this. You cannot be the best in everything. So yeah. you have to make a choice. So obviously, for you, the choice is more often. Yeah, because it's more fun. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can, I can make many dive with monofin. I can dive to 50 all day okay. without DCS. And I, I won't get tired. By the way, that <laughs> that is not a joke because I've been training with Kim and he can do this all day. So tell us, I'm just thinking about your uh, dynamic uh, CO2 tolerance training. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So after he does his deep dive, he does some um, dynamic. Um, let's call it CO2 uh, training, tolerance training. Uh, this exercise come from maybe like Eric Fatah's book or whatever, and I. I, I Adapt it. Maybe okay. maybe it's not his concept. So the, the the thing is, so I go down. Maybe f i t free motion. I hang until the contractions come. I hold I hold the rope and I kick with the monofin or maybe bifin if I have it. Until my leg gets get burned, yeah. or the contraction is too big to to bear. 
I come up. So it's a horizontal swim. You stretch tie, out tie your off. arms, you, yes. you push the line, yes. either finning with the monofin or, or maybe no fins. Yes, and then you, you could do that with, with, uh, with no fin too. Until the contraction starts? No, I, I hang, I hang before. before. Okay. And then after the contraction start, I start moving. Oh, okay. And that usually get me to the hypoxia state. Uh, so when, when comes the moments that you decide, okay, I'm at 15, 20 meters depth, now it's time to go back up. How do you know? As, as I say, it's either the contraction is too big or, or the legs get lactic. When, when I get like a little numb on my leg. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. In, in, in his book, he described it, it has to be a, what, is, what, what is called full body hypoxic. So it has to be hypoxic in the brain and hypoxic in the leg at okay. the same time. But I mean, I, I might have done it uh, too much because the way, the way he described in the book is that this dive you should be able to do is maybe 30 dive in session. But let, let, let's face it, in the regular training session, we don't have that much. We might train for two hours, three hours. So mm -hmm. my thing is I, I do like my deepest dive of the day and then I come back, I do this exercise. Maybe I get six of them, and that's enough. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. So this is um, Kim's uh, personal approach to um, uh, training and competitive freediving. But if you are a competitive freediver or you're thinking about doing your first uh, freedive competition and you have your own method of training, then please let us know in the comment section. It's a great way to connect with other freedivers, so definitely check out the comment section. Um, Kim, let's talk a little bit about the mental part now. Do you feel differently right before a competition? Are you nervous? Do you sleep bad? Or is this all the same for you? Is this just like another training? I mean, it's just called competition, but it's, it's actually the thing, the thing is just, this should be called freediving festival, and like people get together, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's about community. Because it's called competition, some people would be getting too excited yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, I, I like it because before the competition, a lot of people would train and I would have more opportunity to train. Like for example, in Tulamben, if there's no competition, nobody is going to the platform and there's only me and I don't get to go to, to, the, to the platform. Yes. But when many people do it, uh, I get the free ride to the platform. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the only way to train for a competition is basically by doing a competition, right? Yeah, so, uh, so I, 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 I progress on my dip, right? Uh, on the, I go like training, 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 and on the platform, I, I will judge if, okay, if I want to do maybe a little more two meters from, from the previous day. Mm -hmm. If I feel good, yeah. Do you feel nervous, uh, right before? So, like, like, let's say one hour before your um, official top, the time when you uh, have to dive. Do you could, feel nervous? Could, do you sleep bad? Could be sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Is there any way you can counter that? Uh, you have to hypnotize yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is, how do you do that? Uh, many people has different things, you know, like. When you go training, also you you have to hypnotize yourself on every big dive. Yeah, I, I yeah. know, I, I do, I do. And uh, there's many methods like people listening to music, mm -hmm. and sometimes you say to yourself, you know, like uh, some mantra. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you have to have many of them because when you use this, and you use it too much, it becoming a loop, and you like you listen to your old music over and over, and it's, it's crazy. You have to get something new. Yes, yes. So I have, I have many things. You have different methods and uh, you can just pick one and see if it works. Yeah, pick ones at, at, at the moment that I want to use it. Yeah. Um, would you announce a personal record in a competition? or Yes, you... yes it, I, as I say, the personal, the PB, the personal dive, uh, it can be announced. If, if the first, if the training day, I feel good, then okay, today I'm gonna increase my day. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's competition or training, you know, I, I can judge from that. Yeah, so you don't necessarily have to 
have to do um, a PB in training first to be able to do that same PB in uh, competition. Uh, for me, for me, no. For me, I just use uh, it's just that. Yeah. I increase my 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 feeling. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's a competition or a training. Like in training, if you let's say you do a PB, let's say ninety five. And it feels good. Yeah, then, feel, then you know you can go deeper, of yeah, course. Because uh, it's like ninety-seven is only maybe one kick. Yeah, yeah. On the way down, it could be another one minute, yeah. two two seconds more. Yeah. So yeah. So let's say ninety ninety-five would feel perfectly fine in training, and then your next dive would be a competition dive. You would have no problem in announcing a little deeper. Yes, I I would do that because I I like to dive deep and. I like to dive to my limit, yeah. like close to my limit. Yes, and that's exactly what competitive freediving is for. So, in competitions, we have world-class uh, safety teams. So this is the perfect opportunity, of course, to uh, search for your limits. And there's only one way to get to know your limit, and that is to go. Uh, I I prefer not out. not to rely on them. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to 95 without anybody once. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. my buddy didn't know that I went. <laughs> wow! I came back and he's he's on a buoy, watching the sky. I was wow. like, oh, <laughs> this is against all rules of freedom. I mean, yes, yes, this is this is not good. So we try to avoid, no. try to avoid this. But the thing is, you should not try to rely on your yes. uh, safety exactly. to right. push yourself. There's, there's no push in freediving. That's exactly. this is the wrong word. This is not in the dictionary. And I completely agree. Um, pushing. Um, um, yeah, I don't understand that concept either of uh, pushing for that. Uh, I mean, you do what you can do, and if you feel fine, then you can go deeper. And if you don't feel fine, then you're not ready for it. It's as simple uh, as it is. Right. So, yeah. so um, let's wrap this up, Kim. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for people who want to do their first freediving competition? Yeah, I mean, in, in freediving, we usually say, is freediving free a sport? For me, it's not. It, it's, it's a practice, you know. It's like the monk in the temple. You practice the meditation. If if it's a sport, you, you would have like, oh, I need to train. I need to, I need to have like three months training, training, training. And when you train, you go to competition, and you didn't do good. Uh, your your mind would be like, I waste half a year. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. But if you do it, if you treat it like uh, meditation, or you treat it like uh, I go to temple, I do this every day. Yes. Actually, you would dive more, you would be more in the ocean and it's likely that you do it better in yes. competition training or whatever. Actually, I don't even like this word, training. Yeah. I, I just, when I tell people, hey, tomorrow let's, let's dive. Let's meditate. <laughs> with, with a mask and a snorkel and some fish. Yeah, what, That's uh, what it is. You, you, come, you come to diving, I'm not saying like, do you want to train tomorrow? I, I, I try to avoid that, but I hate it. All right, let's keep that in mind. Let's meditate. Never say let's go free dive. Let's meditate. That's it, guys. If you have an idea for a new video in this channel, then please let me know in the comments down below. Give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to this channel. Peace in every breath. If, if it's not recorded, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs>